Hey guys, it's Steph here with Crafty Ladybug. Today's lesson is going to be on Gabby Douglas, a gymnast. Many of you who are gymnasts, I'm sure know who she is. Um, this is the first gymnast that I did and created a really long time ago, like back in December, because I made it for one of my daughter's friends. And I did not do a lesson on her because there were some other gymnast tutorials already out there. And I decided I just didn't want to to do those but so many people have asked for her specifically so I have decided to do my version of a gymnast which is slightly different than everybody else's the arm size is different um, she's gonna actually have hair on the back of her head the new one that I'm doing I'm doing two parts I'm doing Gabby as one and the regular basic gymnast as another which she'll now have hair on the back of her head um, it was created so long ago it was before I even came up with the hair technique. So, and I want to thank PG's Lumacy because he is the original action figure creator and he actually was the very first person to even post a photo of the gymnast and he helped me through with a couple questions I was having on it. So, big hoorah to PG's Lumacy. You can find his link down at the bottom of my page in the description. Check him out. He's got some great items. So let's get started with our Miss Gabby. Of course, today we're going to be using black for her hair. I'm using brown for her skin tone. I'm using red for the part of the suit. I'm using blue for the part of the suit. And I'm also using white for a part of the suit, which I haven't gotten the white out yet, so I need to do that. Bear with me just a moment. Okay. I'm all set now, sorry about that delay. Now, to begin, we're gonna always start with the hair and I'm going to lay the layer of the hair first and then I'm going to lay uh, the rest of the bands for the body and then we're going to do a layer for the arms. For the hair, the first thing I want you guys to do for the hair is to take a black band and a single black band. You're going to come down the loom once a single black band twice, a single black band again, and a single black band again. So there's one, two, three, four single black bands. Then we're going to cap this end off with a three time cap band. One, two, and three. I take that back, that's going to be a four time cap band. Number four. And we're gonna stretch that out and over that piece right there. And this is going to be her ponytail, which is going to look different than the one that I have created here, my test sample of Gabby. I don't like how this ponytail turned out, so I decided to do it as a chain. So we're going to pick this up and we're going to loop forward once. And we're going to loop forward twice. And we're going to loop forward again. And we're just going to finish off this chain and then we're going to take it off and leave it on our hook because we're going to need this in just one or two minutes. Set your loom back down. Um, I should have probably said when I started that our loom is set in the offset with the arrows pointing from the left going towards the right. And our next step is going to be to place a single black band on the end of the loom right here and let it dangle over the edge. That is our securing band. We're going to take two bands and we're going to go from top one to middle one. Middle one with two bands to bottom. And then we're going to take two bands at the top. Two bands again at the top. Two bands again on the bottom, two bands again on the bottom, and for this next part of the bottom we're making a really long diagonal with two bands and you're making a long diagonal, really long piece. Two bands again and you're going to close off that diagonal and now we're going to work on the center portion. So for the center portion, you're going to take two bands 
For the next center portion, I want to add in the hair. So you're going to take two bands, lay those two bands down, then you're going to take your hair piece and you're going to pick up that one band that you just laid down and slide your hair piece onto it. And just tuck it down in your loom. You want to just tuck that down in your loom as far as you can. So essentially you just link that on those two bands. If I take it off the loom, you guys will see here's my two bands and there's my piece of hair. So we're just going to put that back on the loom. And the next step is two bands and two bands. I need to cap off this piece right here with a two time cap band. So you'll take one black band, wrap it around your hook twice, and you're going to stretch that out and over right there. We need to lay a few horizontal bands. Sorry about that. A single band going from pegs two, two, and two, single black. Another single black coming across three, three, and three. And now we are ready to begin to loop her hair. And if you haven't followed it along with some of my lessons, I loop a portion of it. I bring back a piece to rest it on peg number four. And then I lay the rest of my um, face and the body out. So let's start by taking our hook and pushing back that two time cat band, grabbing those two bands that are in the center and coming forward. Grab the next two bands that are in the center and link forward. And grab the next two bands that are linked in the center and move forward. You don't want to touch that hair that's down there, her ponytail. And you do not want to loop up the rest of the way on the loom. You want to stop right there at peg number two. We're going to reach back in and do the left side. Going over to the left with those two bands. And the next set is going to come out and we're not going to link forward. You're actually going to pull it out and up and lay it on peg number four. So you've unhooked it from peg number three and you would typically loop to number four, but you don't want to. You want to pull it back to, or you would typically loop to peg number two. You want to pull it back to peg number four. And the reason being is that's how our hair is going to lock in at the end. Now I need to reach into the center again and come over to the right. And on right peg number three, we're just gonna lift out our bands, right peg number three, instead of looping to two, we pull it back to right four. I'm gonna hold that closer so you guys can take a look at it. And that is the way that your loom should look for the hair. Now we're ready to begin to lay her face portion and the rest of her body. For her face, we just need to push down all of these bands and looms, this bands on the loom. Push them down because we have lots of space that we need. We need these pegs. So let's begin with her face. I want to let you know I've already strung two black beads on a single brown band. If you don't know how to do that, I have a lesson on my channel called uh, Tips and Techniques or Tip Torals, and I tell you how to thread a bead on a band. You want to take two brown bands, and we're going to lay from peg number two to peg number three with those two brown bands. Two bands again, going from peg number two to three in the center. Two brown bands again, going from two to three at the bottom. Two brown bands, coming from peg three to four in the center. Two brown bands, going from peg three over to the center to form a diagonal. That's going to be our cheek area. Two brown bands, finishing off the cheek area from the bottom to the center. And then the next step is three brown bands. You want a total of three bands for the neck. 
coming down for the neck. And our next step is going to be a little bit tricky because we need to lock in the back of her hair. So at your three bands from your neck, you want to pick up this black cat band where her hair was. And you just want to move it over on top of the three brown bands that you just laid. This locks her hair in place at the neck area. I'm going to go ahead and lay out her face horizontal bands. And for that, you're going to need a single band going across pegs number two a single brown band going across pegs number three to form a triangle. And I'm also going to put her eyes on. Her eyes are going to go from peg two to two, upper two to bottom two. That's where her eyes are going to be. And with her eyes like that, you want to grab a portion of that band, not both pieces, just one part. And you want to gently pull it down to center peg number three. Let's see if I can get to a closer look of that, how the eyes are. There you go. Many of you that follow along with my lessons kind of have how I do my face now. And if you don't, just slow the video down and catch up. Our next step is going to be to do the neck area or the chest area. And in order to get the brown to show up on the back, little piece of brown here on the back for her skin and the brown further down at the bottom. We need to lay our brown next. So I'm taking three bands and I'm laying that right down the loom on the center portion from the neck down. Now we can take two white bands, two white bands, and we're going to go from this point here over with two white bands again. We're going to come down once. I'm going to switch and I'm going to use red next. So I have two red bands coming down. Two more red bands coming down again. And I need to switch to blue now, two blue. And now I'm going to switch back to brown again because I'm going to start working on her leg portion right here. So for the leg, we want first to do two bands. And the next one, we want three bands. Makes her thigh just a little bit thicker in that area. The next band here is going to be a single brown, one brown, double twisted and placed on the loom. Next portion of the leg is a single brown, double twisted and placed on the loom. And I'm just going to take a moment and straighten those up slightly. We're a little twisted. We're going to come up here and we're going to start to work on the center again which is going to be two red bands on the center, two red bands on the center, two blue bands, two blue on the center, two blue again on the center, and we need to stop there. That's going to be it for our center pieces. I'm going to work on the shoulder area, which will be two red bands. Now I'm going to work on the bottom row, which is two red. And two red again. Two blue. two blue and now I need to switch to brown again to match her other leg so it'll be two brown three brown and now we switch to one brown 
double twisted and placed on our loom. One brown, double twisted and placed on our loom. And we need to lay our horizontal bands. So for our horizontal bands, the first one we're going to lay is one red. One red going to go from peg number one, two, three, four, five, six. Peg number six top, six middle, and six bottom to form a triangle. Another single red band working right there. And this next one is going to be blue. And I'm taking a single blue. I'm going to double twist it and place it right there. And these are blue jellies. I'm using blue jellies. I might not have wanted to double twisted that one. So I'm actually going to relieve that and do just one there. Or let's do one in a piece because I'm using jelly bands. Jelly bands are tighter. So I'm just going to tighten it up on that center peg. And that was a very easy technique that I just did. Anytime one band's not um, tight enough, put it on like you would do just one band and then grab a portion of it and just a loop and twist it around the center peg. That's what I call a twist and a half. So that's a one and a half twist. And our area here is going to be brown again. And then our next area here in the thigh area, linking the thigh in, is going to be brown also. But you guys will notice that this piece is just sort of hanging out here and not really doing a whole lot. We're just going to pick that up and loop it onto the front of the, the peg where the blue ends. And that's going to link her body in. We want to take a moment and we want to push all this stuff down again because we still need her arms to do. We still have to do her arms and we still have to do um, a portion of her legs. So I'm just going to push everything down. And the first part that I'm going to do is her legs. So I'm going to pick the loom up because this is going to be, we don't need our loom for this part. And we're not even going to use the loom for our arm this time either. So let's follow along closely. I'm just picking up my loom so I can get to the area right here. I need some brown bands because I'm going to work on her feet first. So for her feet, I'm just adding a little bit of an extension because the loom wasn't long enough. I'm taking a single brown band, wrap it around my hook three times. A single brown band, double twisted, pulled through and reclaim. A single brown, double twisted, pulled through and reclaimed. Another single brown, double twisted, pulled through and reclaimed. So that is going to be our leg extension. Your cat band and one, two, three lengths of a double twisted band. And then you just want to place that on her leg area and that gives her her little bit of extension for her leg. I need to do the same thing for the other leg. A single band, twist it around my hook three times. A single band, double twisted and pulled through and reclaimed. A single band, double twisted, pulled through and reclaim. And the third one, double twisted, pulled through and reclaim. And I'm just going to place that on her leg area. Now for the arms, I could build her arms here onto the loom. I don't want you guys to get confused about that layering technique that I use during um, some of my beach dolls. But if you want to follow along and check out the beach series, the beach mom and the beach dad, I did their arms a little bit differently. And you can check out that technique because I might switch back and forth between the arm te techniques uh, for a little while. But for her arm, 
we need to take a single brown band and we're going to wrap it around our hook four times. So it looks like there are four bands on our hook. Next thing we want to do is to take a single red, double twist it, and pull through, and reclaim. Just like we were doing our feet, single red, double twisted, pulled through, a single red, double twisted, and pulled through, a single red, double twisted and pulled through and the next one we need to do is three three red bands one two and three we're going to pull through three red bands because most gymnasts have really muscular biceps and the next one is going to be three red bands again pull through and reclaim so I'm going to place this on my shoulder area, which is peg number one, two, three, four, and five. Peg number five gets us stretched out over our cross step. And there's our little arm for peg number five. I'm just going to turn my loom over because I know my next arm is going to go right here. And it's just awkward for me to try to reach it the other direction. Now I'm switching to white bands and I still need a brown. We're going to start off with her hand portion, one band wrapped around your hook four times. So you want it to look like there are four bands on there. Now a single white, double twisted, and pulled through, and reclaim. A single white, double twisted, pulled through, and reclaimed. A single white, double twisted, pulled through and reclaim. A single white, double twisted, pulled through and reclaim. And the next is going to be three again. One, two, three. Pull those three through and reclaim. And the next is going to be three. Pulled through and reclaim. And that is our other arm. And we're just going to take a moment and place it right here where that white joins. And that is going to be her arm. Now we are actually ready to start to loop our creation. I need to pick my loom up. And I'm going to start off right down here with my feet. And I'm going to loop my left side first pushing back the little extra pieces for the foot band, that cat band. And this is pretty simple. You're just grabbing whatever's down there and you are looping it to the next forward peg. Now I've reached my brown horizontal, push back that horizontal and come up, push back that horizontal and come up with your blue, push back your horizontal, come up with your blue, push back with your horizontal and you're going to weave out your red, push back and come up and secure that off right there at the shoulder area. Now at the shoulder area pull on your arm a little bit. If you pull on your arm a little bit you can easier get to, is that a word easier get to? You can reach the bottom bands a little bit easier. There we go. Two bands there in the shoulder and moving over and now I'm going to work on my right side and the reason why I link this one first before going up with the center is because I want the brown to show up more here in the center for her chest area. Most gymnasts have a deep V neck for some reason and I am just reaching in to these pegs and grabbing whatever's there Brown bands, come forward, push back your horizontal, grab your blue and come forward. Push back your horizontal and come forward. 
push back your horizontal and come forward, push back your horizontal and loop forward. Now we're to the shoulder area again. I'm just taking my white and I'm going to pull it down slightly so I can easier reach the bottom two whites over to the center. And now I'm ready to start with her center portion. So where the blue starts, you just want to grab that blue band and link it straight up. Grab your next set of blue bands and link those straight up. Now this peg here, if you followed along with me and you did that little extra twist on this horizontal band, you need to push back that little twist and grab your red underneath and come forward. Grab your red underneath and come forward. And this is going to be our brown bands, our three brown bands, and come forward. And just pushing those items down a little bit. And now for, we're at the neck area. Lots of bands here. There's a lot of stuff going on on the center peg. So we want to reach in, pushing back everything, and we're going to grab the bottom three brown bands and gently weave those out and loop them forward. And now if you're to this portion, you're going to see that the little black portion, that cat band that we used for a hair band to secure in our hair, the black of our hair, is kind of in the way of you getting to those other bands for your cheek. I like to grab that band, the two black bands, here it is right here, and just move it back to the neck band. It's already locked in, it's not going to hurt anything, but it just gets it out of the way so you can reach these pieces in here for the cheek. So at the cheek area, we're going to reach in, grabbing our top two bands, which are going to go over to the left. I'm reaching in again and I'm grabbing the next top two bands, which are going to go over to my right. And then I'm going to reach into the center again, and I do not want the two black bands that are down underneath there. There's another set of black bands under there. Don't grab those. You want the two brown bands and come forward. Now we can do our nose, pushing back that little cat band of the eye and grabbing those two brown bands forward. Leave the black bands alone that are underneath there on that peg. For peg number two in the center, we're going to reach in and we're grabbing the black bands and we're going to link forward. I'm going to move over here to the left side and the left side is going to be a little tricky because we need to link in this piece of hair that we had moved to the back. So on the left side, you want to push through all of your browns and you want to get to those bottom two brown bands. You don't want the black ones, you want the bottom ones. So push back Grab those two brown, and you're going to weave those out and loop forward to peg number two. Now for peg number two, we need to secure in our hair, which is back here on peg number four. So go back down to peg number four, grab your hair, pull it over to the side again, and link it on to peg number two. Here I've just pulled the back of my head, the back of my hair, into the front part of my head. Peg number two, push back everything you see there, and we want those bottom two black bands. Weave out and come forward. Two bands and come over to the center. Now we need to do our right side, and we're almost done, guys. You're going to have a beautiful Gabby in just a minute. Pushing back. Once again, we need to get to these, these two brown bands are what we need to get to, the brown bands of the face. So push back everything that's there, grabbing those two brown bands, and come forward to peg number two. We need to link in the hair back here that's on number four. We need to grab that hair piece, move it over to the side, and link it up onto number two. Now we're ready to finish up, pushing back everything that's there. We want the bottom two black bands and come forward. We need to finish up here, grabbing the two black bands, come over to the center. And we're ready to secure her off. So grab your dangle band and we need to reach in there and we need to pull up that dangle band. Pull that dangle band up, 
weave it out, hook on, slip knot it off, and cross your fingers that we did Gabby right. Reach in. I always use the back of my hook or a wooden skewer or something. You don't want to just rip it right off because if you rip it off, you're going to have a lot more fiddling to do to get her to look right. So you use the back of your hook or the front of your hook. Don't just yank her right off the loom. So many people do that and they're like, I can't get this to go right. Well, did you just yank it right off your loom? <laughs> I always do that. I always do the unhooking just because it's much easier and you don't break any bands. We've gotten this far on it. Why do we want to risk breaking a band and having our whole creation fall apart? So here we have got Miss Gabby. Give her hair in the back a little tug. Here's her ponytail in the back. Now for her ponytail, we can either take her black hair piece band and we can wrap it around there a couple times and that pops out her hair a little bit or you can take a red band I'm going to use red and wrap it around your hook three times wrap that red band around your hook three times and then just slide it on over her hair, that little piece of her hair, and that's going to give her ponytail kind of like the little elastic band look. We can pull and tug on these just to cover up the back of her hair a little bit. If you like her ear sticking out, that's great. If you don't like that ear sticking out, just move the hair around some. Give it a little pull and tug, and depending upon which direction you tug in, will make the bands go and fall into whichever place you want them to be. But here we've got our Gabby figure, and just I'm just tucking and pulling on the band some. If you want her arm to be up, you can pose her arm up. If you want her arm to be down, you can pose her arm down. If you want her to be doing a split, I would pull on her legs a little bit, and if you want her to split, grab your right leg bands, and you want to pull up with your hook on the right, makes her leg go to the back, and if you want to do it on her other leg, her left leg, turn her over, grab that band and pull, and here we've got Miss Gabby doing a split. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this quick lesson on the gymnast, Miss Gabby Douglas. If you want to get your um, stomach a little tighter, I think we probably should have cinched in this area with a double twist band, but that's okay. Would have just made her belly a little tighter. And it really depends upon, too, which type of band you're using. Um, I use different bands for both of these Gabbies. And as you can see, they're the same, same figure. Just with the way that the bands are, they've turned out to be a little bit of a different size. So there is our Gabby Douglas. Show me your photos of Gabby on the balance beam. And I will talk to you guys later.